Hey guys, so the thumbnail picture of this video is of a client of mine who I helped to get rid of her excessive bloating, which was one of her main health complaints. And by the way, she did, she did give me permission to use that photo. Um, and afterwards she told me that aside from the menu plan I had created for her, one of the things that really helped her was certain tips that I get, that I'd given her. So in this video, I wanted to share those tips with you. So here are my top five tips to get rid of bloating and to get a flatter stomach. Okay, so tip number one is to take digestive enzymes along with your meals. Um, oftentimes, bloating is related to poor digestion. So the one I take is Renew Life, and I take this when I, I, I question what type of ingredients is are you know are in the meal because um, I'm lactose intolerant. So this contains lactase as well, which helps to digest the lactose sugars in dairy products. Um, yeah, so this is by Renew Life. It's called Digest More with HCL because HCL hydrochloric acid is a great way to help you digest as well. It stimulates acid in your stomach to help, you know, break down food. So yeah, a digestive enzyme along with your meals. If you don't have any on hand, a great thing to consume along with your meals is pineapple or papaya. Pineapple contains, they both contain protein enzymes or enzymes that help digest protein. In papaya, it's an enzyme called papain and in pineapple, it's an enzyme called bromelain. And they help to digest protein specifically, but I mean that's going to still help with your overall digestion, especially if you've eaten a really meat heavy meal or protein rich meal and you know, you have a feeling you're going to have issues with digestion afterwards, I recommend consuming, you know, just a bit of papaya or, you know, just a small serving of pineapple with that meal. So that's another way you can incorporate more enzymes into your meals. And also eating, have eating mostly raw foods as much as possible, so like salads, because raw foods keep a lot of the enzymes intact, whereas, you know, the cooking process destroys a lot of the enzymes so yeah just incorporating more raw foods into your diet so tip number one is digestive enzymes whether you get it from a pill or from pineapple papaya you know raw foods digestive enzymes are a great thing okay so tip number two is probiotics now, in your gut, there's bad bacteria and there's good bacteria. And obviously, you want to have more good bacteria than bad bacteria. And the bad bacteria is the bacteria that causes a lot of gas, which causes a lot of bloating. So, um, a great probiotic, you can take probiotic pills, which you can find at your local health food store. Um, but if you're looking for a more natural way to get probiotics into your diet, a great way is fermented foods like kimchi or sauerkraut. So here's a bottle of, or a tub of kimchi. Now this is an acquired taste. It's kind of salty, spicy, vinegary. It's, it's an acquired taste. Um, and it has a very strong smell to it. So it's not something you would want to bring to lunch, you know, to work because it would just stink up the whole place. But um, it's great. Now, with fermented foods, you do have to be careful because you can't rely on just these to get your probiotics because they contain a lot of sodium. Um, like this one, for instance, um, for two tablespoons, there's 270 milligrams of sodium. You can try to find low sodium kimchi, but it's extremely hard to find. Um, and this isn't a low sodium kimchi, it's just a regular kimchi. So yeah, kimchi does contain a lot of sodium, so you do want to be careful of that. Um, but I mean, in moderation, it's a great way to add probiotics in, you know, into your diet. So fermented foods are great, just gotta be careful with the sodium. Um, it's also, so since you can't rely on just this for probiotics, you can also consume cultured dairy products. So, or cultured non-dairy products, like, um, this is yogurt. So either culture, dairy, or non-dairy products are a great way to incorporate more probiotics. So again, 
to review tip number two is probiotics, whether you get it from pills, fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut, or cultured foods. Okay, so tip number three is to slowly increase your fiber intake. And the key word here is slowly. Because if you're not used to consuming a lot of fiber, when you start ingesting a lot of fiber into your, or incorporating a lot of fiber into your diet, all of a sudden, you're, it's actually going to contribute to your bloating rather than reduce it. So if you're not used to eating a lot of fiber, I would slowly increase your fiber intake. And that is going to help to you know, move food down through your intestines and just clean your intestines and provide roughage. So you want to eat a lot of high fiber foods like fruits and vegetables. Now, once you reach a point where you can incorporate even more fiber into your diet, you're looking ways to do that beyond just fruits and vegetables. One thing I recommend is PGX um, supplements. And PGX is a powder, and this one is packaged in little packets that look like this. And what you do, it's tasteless. You add it to your, to like your water or your drinks, and you stir it in, and it thickens, and it thickens it a bit. Um, it's great. It also, it's a great weight loss supplement as well because it reduces appetite. Um, it lowers the glycemic index of foods that you're accompanying this with and it promotes blood, good blood sugar levels um, and it reduces tri uh, cholesterol and triglyceride levels as well. So this is a great, you know, multi-purpose um, supplement. Yeah, so each packet contains about 2.5 grams of fiber and it's a great, you can also cook with this as well. Um, I like to add it to soups to thicken the soups. You can also add it to pie fillings or healthy pie fillings and it add, it thickens that as well so you don't have to add pectin or agar into it. So you can cook with this, you can add it to beverages. It's a great way to incorporate more fiber into your diet. Just make sure that when you're consuming this that you take in a lot of water with it because if you don't it's just gonna um, make you bloated and clog up your intestines because it is powerful stuff. So, yeah, I recommend this to get more fiber into your diet. Just remember to consume a lot of water when you take this. Okay, so tip number four is to avoid carbonated beverages and refined sugars. I mean, you should be avoiding those anyway. It's not just for bloating, but just for your health in general. So, those foods definitely contribute to bloating, especially the refined sugars because they're they're the ultimate food source for the bad bacteria in your gut and it's just going to feed the bad bacteria and make it make them repopulate and grow all throughout your gut and it's going to beat out the good bacteria so you want to avoid refined sugars and carbonated beverages as well because they just contribute to the gas related bloating okay and also you want to limit gassy foods um, I mean there are a lot of gassy foods that are healthy as well so that's why I say limit not avoid completely, like lentils, beans, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, they all, you know, promote gas and flatulence. So you want to limit those. Um, and it, a great way to still enjoy lentils and beans without all that flatulence that it can cause is to soak them overnight before you use them. So just take dried lentils or dried beans, dried legumes, and just soak them in cold or cool water overnight, just leave them on the counter, and then drain them and rinse them when you're about to use them the next day. And it's going to remove all the starches on the exterior that cause um, all that gas. So that's a great tip right there. And yeah, so limit them, but don't eliminate them because they are high in nutrients and rich in fiber. So yeah. Okay, so tip number five is to eat slowly and chew your food properly. Um, I recommend chewing your food at least 10 chews per bite before you swallow. And eating slowly is not only going to help with your digestion and with reducing bloating, but it also helps you, or it also helps, it gives your brain time to register when you're full. Because when you just, you know, scarf the food down, it's, you're not going to be able to register, you know, exactly, like pinpoint the time when you're full so that you stop eating. So you actually end up eating more when you eat faster. 
Um, and also, space out your meals throughout the day. So try eating smaller meals more often throughout the day than eating like large meals, especially right before bed. Because right before, like to in the evening, your digestive system slows down. It's not as um, active. So you want to make sure you're not eating a very large and heavy meal um, at the end of the day for dinner. And um, yeah, so eat slowly. Chew your fruit properly, at least 10 chews per bite, and make sure that you're not eating large meals a few times throughout the day. It's more ideal to eat smaller meals throughout the day. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, those are my top five tips. Yeah, if you guys are suffering from bloating too, you can jot down these tips on a piece of paper and then just take them with you wherever so that you're reminded of them. Or, you know, you can refer back to this video. But yeah, and if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, always try to try my best to respond to all of them. Sometimes, I'm, sometimes I miss them, um, but I try my best to make sure I respond to all of them, or as much as possible. So anyways, um, have a great day, enjoy the great weather, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!